it here. Anyways, hello everybody. I'm Bill Batson, and this is Mike Thorson. Howdy. We're here. Today is Friday on our live Blank Talk. We're going to do something a little special today, something a little different. I brought in Mike today to go ahead and give us a little bit of history. So um, give it a couple of minutes or give it maybe another minute or so for people to jump on. But I want to explain to you, today we're going to talk about glass blanks and why we use glass blanks for certain applications and what you can do with glass blanks. But I brought Mike in to give you the technical terms and the history behind the glass blanks. So Mike, you want to go ahead and give us a little history on that? Sure. Currently, we work with e-glass and two different types of S-glass. Uh, e-glass was developed in the 40s, um, essentially as an electrical insulator, i.e. that's where the E came from. Um, yeah. Shortly after that, they discovered it was applicable in certain aviation applications where you were looking for strength and flexibility. Then a guy by, with the last name of Shakespeare, which I'm sure we've all heard, created a product in the late 40s called a Wonder Rod. Him and I think a guy by the name of McGuire, I was just checking before I came out here. But that was really the first application of e-glass in a fishing rod. Before that, everything was either steel or bamboo. And steel obviously very heavy, bamboo somewhat fragile and hard to work with. So they saw the advantages and went ahead and created that. I'm old enough to remember Shakespeare Wonder Rods in the <laughs> 60s and, and early 70s. Graphite came, in, came on the, the scene in the 70s. I think Skyline and Zebco were the first ones to bring them out. Anyway, e-glass, um, it's a woven material, so it's like screen. It's got fibers running linear and horizontal. Um, the, fib the ply thickness of it is fairly <clears throat> thick in comparison to, say, carbon fiber, pre prags that we make blanks out of. Um, advantages of it, it's typically used in a rod where you're looking for a lot of strength because of its elongation ability. In other words, it won't snap like a carbon fiber will. Um, carbon fiber is stronger individually, but it will only bend so far and then it will shear. Glass is lower modulus, but it has more elongation, so hence when you're building a tuna rail rod or whatever where you really need a lot of strength, it's the absolute perfect material to use. We commonly blend it with some standard graphite where we'll run that in the butt end of a blank to help it get lifting power without adding a lot of weight. But the e-glass, very, very good for live bait, and jig rods, uh, heavy trolling rods and that type of thing. Not something you'd probably build a fly rod with today, they used to. The limitations of it are the, the ply thickness is quite a bit heavier than say standard graphite. So you can only roll it so small. Um, rolling meaning tooling for a rod. Some of the tips on rods are 30 to 40 thousandths on the inside. With a thick material, the analogy would be like rolling cardboard around a pencil. It won't roll very flat. If you put notebook paper around that pencil, it will compact and roll well. Carbon fiber pre prags are like the paper. E-glass is like the cardboard. Um, memory. That's a feature or a function of the material itself. It doesn't have the ability to snap back as quickly. When we test for memory on fiberglass blanks, we give them 24 hours to recover. You can see memory develop in a blank. Um, it's not unusual, but generally they will snap back. Uh, all, most of ours always do, obviously. Um, so, excuse me, Mike, the memory part, we, see, we rarely see the memory part. Right. What do you think that is? What would cause memory in a blank? Well, if you bend it hard in one direction and leave it there in, say, a warmer environment or whatever, the fibers itself don't have the ability to straighten it back up. They aren't stiff enough. On a carbon fiber blank, those fibers have, they're stiffer in just right. in modulus, um, so they will spring back a little bit quicker. The... On S-glass, what I want to talk about, there's two real main types. There's an S-glass that is woven just like E-glass. We use that in our Judge series. And its advantage is it's very similar to E-glass except for S stands for strong, believe it or not. That's what the S stands for in that uh, terminology. Um, it's about 30% stronger by fiber and about 10% stiffer. So when you're looking for the absolute highest strength, like some of the judge blanks that we use it in, yep. 
It's very, very strong. Is it, is it thinner also? Um, not a whole lot. Okay. The, the, the unidirectional S-glass that I'm going to talk about is the thinner one. Okay. The S-glass that we use in the judges is probably about a similar to a 180 gram E-glass. E-glass is generally 240 or 180. The S-glass that is used uh, is, used, I think it's about 180. The last one that we work with, and we just introduced a couple of blanks this year, is a unidirectional S-glass. What that is, is it's, a, it's laid up very similar to a carbon fiber. So the S-glass fibers are just running tip to butt. They're not woven. There's a scrim system with them, and the ply thickness it's much thinner. It's probably 40% thinner than the S-glass that we use in a judge. Yep. You can roll a much finer tip. We developed a couple of crankbait blanks this year um, that are outstanding as far as how light they are, crisp. They have that elongation ability, um, so they're real strong as well. Part of the reason glass in crankbaits is so popular or moderate action carbon fiber for that reason is you don't want the bait to get pulled away from the fish when it hits. And also fish generally, when they see a boat for the first time, will make a run, okay? With a stiff carbon fiber blank, if you just have a single treble hook in the mouth of a bass or whatever it is you're fishing for, they have a better chance of pulling that bait free. The glass will give a little bit more, so your, your landing percentage goes way up. It works real well with reaction baits like chatter baits, spinner baits, crank baits, that type of stuff. Right. But you know, the common question is difference between E and S. Initially, the E glass is thicker, very heavy duty. The next S glass is a little bit thinner ply than the heavy E glass, stronger and a little bit more stiff, about 10%. And then you have the linear S glass. Those are basically the three ones. Um, Linear S glass too, can, you see certain guys are starting to use it in fly rod applications as well. It, it lends itself to that real well because you can again roll a finer tip. Keep in mind when I talk about tips, again, some of the tooling, if you can imagine this, you're taking a material and you're rolling it around a piece of tooling that's 30 or 40 thousandths of an inch in diameter. Right. That's why you can't roll E glass that small. It just won't bend like that. Correct. Okay. <laughs> That's why most e-glass blanks, you'll see the tip tops are going to be, you know, size eight or above, generally speaking. That's just a shot in the dark. But, yep. and, uh, so that's pretty much it, Bill. Excellent. Well, thanks, Mike. I yep. mean, we appreciate your knowledge. And Mike has been with this company for over 18 years. He's designed thousands of blanks for us. He's one of my top guys here, if not the top guy here. But um, Mike is, is an amazing guy, you know. So anyways, thank you, Mike. You bet. Appreciate you. You bet. All right. All right, so you get a quick overview of what um, glass is and why we use it. You know, a lot of, a lot of blanks nowadays, they're, they're blends, but we do have a glass series of blanks. It's, it's, it's price point sensitive, it's durable, and we have a lot of different models. So I'm gonna go through some of those models today. Um, Eden, Sarah, are you gonna be joining me now? Eventually, yeah. Eventually. Say hello. Hi. Everybody knows Eden, my daughter, so we'll be doing some demonstrations today on some glass and talking about different things. Yes, we will be. So let's go ahead and uh, first of all, a little bit of what happened last week. Thank you very much for the, for the response in our secret blanks. Secret blanks. Secret blanks. Everybody <laughs> liked that. You know, different models that we carry, uh, models that are not cataloged but we do have them in stock, mm -hmm. colors that are not in stock, I mean, that are in stock that are not cataloged. It was a very good show last week. We had a lot of people, we had a lot of people contact us, you know, especially the SU 1207. Yeah. People like that 10 footer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's a tough one to, to ship. I mean, the shipping charges on a 10 footer almost anywhere in the United States are over $300. So yeah. some people weren't happy about that, but. I will be delivering some blanks like that to California. Beautiful. And the BP 1446 for the surf rod. That was a popular one also. Um, a lot of different things. Maybe later in this show, I'll show you some special components that we have in stock now. I am just hearing about this. Yeah, I can't tell you all my secrets. All right. So anyways. It's improv. Yeah, a little improv. Yes, and. Yes. 
So that was the cleanup from last week. Um, Eden has something she wants to talk about. Yeah, we got a really nice response to our bottle openers that we showed um, the other week. Not last week, but the week before last. Um, and we got a wonderful review, so I thought that we would read it. Great. Um, and we will be giving away one of these. So these are 10-gauge steel. They're handmade in the U.S. Oh, and we're just ripping them open. I don't want to see it. I want okay. to show it. Okay. Go ahead, finish. You can um, talk. No, they're 10-gauge steel. They're made in the U.S. by a family um, out, I think it's in Minnesota. Minnesota. And, yeah, uh, handmade magnets on the back, <laughs> um, wonderful quality, and we got a wonderful review, so I figured we would read it. Yeah. Um, but first, how do I pronounce that word? What? Macau. Macau? Yeah. You see when you say it? Macau. 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 Okay. Such a brilliant use of the ancient Hawaiian Macau. Yep. Team Rain Shadow's logo has always carried strength, deep cultural references to include strength, prosperity, abundance, and a great respect for the sea. Yes. They deliver absolute perfection in this opener. The magnets are strong enough to keep it in place while out on the water or even bouncing around on the back of your wheeler, while dual purpose to grab the lid after you pop the top off your bottle. A great conversational piece and attractive coloring to go with, is, with its functionality makes this a must-have for all. Excellent. That was a great review by one of our yeah, customers. Yeah, George Stapley. Thank you, George. We appreciate you. Thank you very you. much, George. Yeah. So, um, yeah, obviously, the hook has a lot of meaning to us, as you can see in our catalogs and throughout the whole Bats in history mm -hmm. um, of our Hawaiian roots, growing up in Hawaii, and all the stuff that has taught us about ohana, about family, and about how, treat, how to treat people, how to be a community, and relationships. Yeah. Very big in Hawaii. And we've brought that along with our faith to this industry. Yes, and so this has become a staple in our logos, and now it has its own place. As our bottle, As our opener. bottle opener. <laughs> and it was cool because Eden was was uh, instrumental in designing this. Yes. You know, so in the marketing department, Eden's doing of course, a lot. You of get the twenty-one things. year old in the marketing department. The first thing she thinks is, "We need a bottle we opener." We need a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, whatever. I mean, for my root beer, I like to have a good root beer on the boat. <laughs> You know, or cream soda, you know, if they're not, you know, sometimes they're not twist offs, right? Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and give one away. Beautiful. Let's pick a winner. Yeah, let's pick a winner. Uh, can you pick me a winner? That's James. Oh, James. yeah. James is behind the scenes today because Jeff is out scouting for hunt. For a hunt. For a hunt. For a hunt. <laughs> pick me somebody, James. Dan Bliss. Dan, Dan Bliss. Bliss. Excellent. Thank you. So tell him how he can get his prize. Dan Bliss, send me a message at Bats and Enterprises. Give me your name, your address. I will ship this out to you as soon as possible. And you are now the proud owner of the Team Rain Shadow Bottle Opener. Excellent. Thank you, Dan. And Thank if you. you liked it and you didn't win it, it's on build2fish.com. Build the number two, fish.com. And you can get your own. Excellent. Made in the USA, baby. Yep. Family owned and operated company, kind of like us. Kind of you know? like us. Somebody just out there trying to make a niche. And yep. And feed Husband their family. and wife team. It's yeah. wonderful, yeah. That is awesome. That is awesome. Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching, by the way. Today, we've got a cool show. I'm going to cut some blanks. We're going to pull on some blanks. We're going to talk about glass blanks today. Woo. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. All right. Let's get the show on the road. You want to back up a little bit, Holly? Thank you. We're going to start with our really popular blank. It's called the FSU, Forecast Stand-Up Blank. And this is an all e-glass blank. They come in one, two, three, four, five, six different configurations, two different lengths from a five, six, heavy, extra heavy, double extra heavy, a six foot medium heavy, which is a very popular one, six foot heavy, and a six foot double X. And this is our forecast stand-up blanks. So a lot of things you can do with this blank. This was designed for East Coast fishing. <laughs> did you see that? I did see that flag. It was landing on your back a bunch. I was staring, trying to get it off you. Do I, I didn't smell? want to say anything. I don't know. It might be attractive to you. <laughs> Anyways, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Little things are distracting Eden and I. It's our ADHD kicking in. Anyways, um, FSU blanks. <laughs> East Coast. Um, a lot of guys use this for trolling. Uh, you can put it in an aluminum butt. You can do a lot of different things with this FSU blank, five and a half, six foot. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pull on a couple of them. And we're going to talk about modifying blanks too in a little bit. We're not going to do that right now, but we will do that later in the show. But yeah. this is a blank that you can cut from the butt, from the tip, do about what, anything you want to do with yeah. it. If it doesn't fit in your aluminum butt, you mic 
micrometer up the up to the blank until you find the outer diameter of the inner diameter of the ferrule you're going to put it in. I'm going to show all that later. So let's just pull on some blank for that. I love it. Yeah. Right. If you stay tuned until a little bit later, we will be cutting a bunch and showing you the difference of what happens when you cut from the tip and from the butt. Yep. And how it affects the action. So the we're going to start with the FSU series. So in this one, they gave me a six foot medium heavy, a six foot heavy, and a six foot extra heavy. So the medium heavy, and these are trolling power. So this would be a 2040. So I, I always push towards a high end on a blank like this. So it'd be a 40 pound trolling rod, 50 pound trolling rod, doesn't matter. Um, and this is the medium heavy. I'll show the medium heavy and we'll pull on it and you can see the power and the action mm -hmm. of this particular blank. This particular blank is a little slower in action than the next series I'm gonna show you, which is more of a West Coast series, but this is my East Coast series. This is a six foot medium heavy. Are you so, gonna pull on it with the- Machine. With the machine? How we're, much do you think you're gonna pull? We're gonna pull on the machine. I should be able to pull, you know, 25, 28. 28? Uh, oh, he's going high. You're gonna try to pull 28 pounds on that thing? I uh, should take a step back. You should take a step back and make sure you recalculate it. And Holly, can you see this? Can you see the action, how it kind of pulls back? Can you see it? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and step into it. This is a really powerful rod, Woo! right? So I'm gonna pull, and you, everybody can see this. And I am not really bottomed out, but that's where I wanna pull. I'm gonna stop there. Yes, please. And that was 30 pounds of pressure. Oh! Can you imagine 30 pounds of drag on a reel? You wouldn't be able to sustain that and hold on to a fish without getting pulled over unless you're tied down to the boat. <laughs> so anyways. This Shackle is, the ankles. Yep. So this is a 2040. So basically falls right in between as far as the, um, the power. So this is a 2040, 30 pounds of pressure. You saw the bend on it, a little more parabolic. Then next one I'm gonna show you, next series I'm gonna show you. So that was my medium heavy, six foot medium heavy. Um, pretty much anything you're gonna want. It might bottom out on, you know, anything over 200 pounds of fish. So if I'm gonna go for fish over 200 pounds, I'm gonna jump right up to the next series. We have a seven, six foot heavy, which is a 30-50. I push on the high end of that, 60. And then we have the double XH. So a lot of guys are taking this and they're putting it in an aluminum butt. This particular one will fit in a number four ferrule. Just, just because. It's not designed that way, but it does. So this would be a number four ferrule. When I say a number four ferrule, it's the number four ferrule of an aluminum butt. Whether it be a short curved, whether it be a, uh, a four straight or a four long, this is the ferrule of a number four. And you can see a lot of guys will do this. And a little bit of arboring, not bad. Use some heavy glue. Everybody has their own opinion on what kind of glue. I like slow cures myself. And you can put it into an aluminum butt and use it as a trolling rod. You can use a lot of different things. So I'll get around to what I'm talking about this a little bit later in cutting blank to fit ferrules. So, but I'll show you this one. And this is our six foot 5080. This rod pretty much do anything you're gonna wanna do. And it's a little slower action. And remember Mike was talking about those slower actions for when those fish get close to the boat, a little more forgiving, you know, a lot of our blanks, even our composite blanks, the graphite's in the back, and then you can put the glass in the tip for those big head shakes or for that when the fish gets close to the boat or just to forgive me so you don't pull hooks or break line. So anyways, I'm gonna pull on this one. And this is, on, this is my extra heavy. And this is a forecast stand up all e-glass blank. That's a stick. It is a stick. <laughs> I don't know how much more 30 that can pull. We're going to find out though. Wait, right wait, here. wait. There we go. Reset. Back up, Eden. Oh. Put my safety glasses on. We're going to give this one a good pull. And you can see how it pulls back a little bit. See how it pulls back? So it bends actually back into here, you know, and it, it'll pull back a little farther as I pull on it. So I'm going to go ahead and pull on it. And we're just going to give it a good beam hole. Pull it out. Of it. Ah! And that one was 38. Ooh! So 
38, anything Whoa. more than that. I mean, I know guys that can pull 50s and stuff. You know, if I wanted to, I probably could. You know, I could stretch it out a little bit more. You know, get but... in the gym. What? You need to get in the gym. What? I, I'm in the gym right here. <laughs> so, anyways, so this is the. <laughs> this is our. Lori Baird says that's a hernia in the making. <laughs> yeah, a hernia in the making. It yes, is, it is. Actually, you know, but I'm good with it. <laughs> it's like I'm fine. I'm fine right. with that. So, anyways. FSU 60XH, so beautiful at 38 pounds of pressure. FSU. Yep. So David Rodriguez is asking, will you guys be doing the ISE shows next year? No, we will not be doing the ISE shows. We don't do any a lot of, um, um, what I should say, consumer shows. We're we're more of a trade industry because of our wholesale status. We were doing other shows that you know the public could come into. The only one that I know of that I'm, there's two that I'm going to be doing public shows where I'll just go in and I'll display our wares and have distributors there that sell our products or anybody who builds a rod in this industry buy something from us. So I'm promoting the brands. So mm -hmm. I will be at the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show in July 18th, 19th, and 20th. Yes. No. Nope. January. No. Nope. February. February. <laughs> third February. time's a try. No, third February. time's a charm. Third 18th, time's a 19th, try. 19th, and 20th. Down in Orange County, California, at the Orange County Fairgrounds. Oh, I'll it's an Orange County Fairgrounds? Yep. We've been there. I we, love that. As a kid, we used to go to Orange County Fairgrounds. Yeah. To the fair, obviously. To the fair. So Eden will be there with me, and Keller will be there with me, and my sister Tammy will be there with me, and Holly will be there, and Eddie Libel, and a bunch of different people, Doc Ski, and Jim Trelecki. Anyways, <laughs> as I get off topic, topic for a minute. Yep. And then we'll do the... The Houston Fishing Show mm -hmm. in Texas, California, Houston, a couple of my favorite states. We need to check the mic, Quill. Oh, did I pull my mic? I did. Oh, hey. Sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> With all that pulling on that blank, I must have. You popped something. <laughs> I popped something. I popped, <laughs> the, popped the cord right out of my mic. So anyways, I don't know how far back I got to go, but I will be at the Orange County Fairground, at the Pacific Coast Sport Fishing Show. And the Houston Fishing Show, and that's February 18th, 19th, and 20th. And then the Houston Fishing Show in March. Yes. I'm not sure the dates on that, but I will get to you. And then we'll do our tr normal trade shows, you know, ICAST and things like we that. We will be posting about them. Keep an eye out on Facebook and Instagram. We will yeah. let you know where we're going to be and what shows we're at a month ahead of time, probably. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, Eden. So, back to the glass. So, this is... The Forecast blanks, um, FSUs, they, they're in the range of $60 to $70 for these blanks. And that's retail. Um, obviously, that's not wholesale. But this is, if you were going to be a retail customer, buy from a distributor, they fall into $60 to $70 blank for a blank. Mm -hmm. Great deal. Mm -hmm. um, can't go wrong. Mm -mm. Bulletproof series. So. Beautiful. Forecast stand-ups. Are we also showing the... We're going to show something else. We're going to Those show ones? another series. This is we're, we're talking glass today, so we're doing all e-glass today. Only e-glass show. And these are our new rain shadow stand-ups. So the forecast, we just had that name from before. It's an older blank. We've had that one in the lineup for 20 plus years. Um, this is a new one. So this is a design from more of the West Coast design. So West Coast manufacturers. Um, have very similar actions to these, but these are the rain shadow versions of them. So we're going to talk a little bit about this. These are heavy duty, quicker action rods. Um, and we have four models in this. We have a heavy, oh, a medium heavy, a heavy, an extra heavy, and a double X. Woo! Crazy. And these are six footers. Um, this series is usually only five and a half. But I, I did a private label deal with the guy, and he wanted the five and a half, so I told him I'm going to do six footers. He says, no problem. You do a six footer. Um, I'm, ha I'm okay with that. So I did a five and a half foot series for him in this, and he buys thousands of them. But beside the point, I did them in six foot. So, but when I did that, as you're going to see, the butts on these things got blown out. And I think I talked about this once before. So... If we did six inches up, give me a tape measure, Eden. Um, I got it right here. Okay. 
if I'm going to do six inches up, I'm going to go right about here. And this would be at five and a half. Where'd your pencil go? No, nope, I need my mics, my micrometers. We're gonna, we're gonna guesstimate here. Are we cutting stuff now? No, nope, I'm just gonna show you what it would look like at five and a half. So right now, at the full six foot, the butt is 1.2 inches. That's a big butt. See, it won't fit even a number six ferrule, right? But if I that. cut six inches off, and it was that's about six inches, we're yeah, we have to cut more than that. We're gonna have to cut. Give me uh, this much. That much? To, yeah, to fit a number six ferrule, I'm gonna have to cut about ten inches off of this blank because this RSU 60 double XH <laughs> to stand up and. F Fish with this is going to be tough. It's, I'm going to pull on it. You're going to see what I mean by tough. So I'd have, I'd have to cut six inches off just to fit a number six ferrule on there. And we're going to go through how to cut blanks in a little bit and why we cut blanks. One of the reasons we cut a blank is to fit a ferrule. But I'm going to show you the power of this one. So this is my rain shadow stand up. And I'm going to show you the action, the power. Go Double ahead, X? Re recal recalculate that. This is the heaviest one we carry in the series. If you want to see wall thickness, I'm sure you can see that. It's heavy. It is thick. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and mic it for you so you can actually see the wall thickness is about a quarter of an, quarter of an inch wall thickness on that. That means there's a lot of material, right? Um, this particular action is going to be quicker. I'm going to show you a little bit here. I'll put it on the machine, but I don't know if the machine will do it justice. But you can see how fast it is, right? And this is just for catching big fish where they're going to be hooked. You don't have to worry about lipping them or anything like that because this, this rod's not very forgiving um, in regards to the softness of the rod. For some reason, they like them a little bit faster, different areas. I mean, I could be hundred miles down one coast and move up a hundred miles and they're going to want a different blank for a different application. Well, this is basically kind of like the same thing. So, and this is our rain shadow standups. This is the extra, extra heavy. And I'll go down and show you what the medium heavy looks like. Much more forgiving, funner to fish with. But this is the one if I'm going to fish big fish and not have to worry about it. This is the one. So that's the one. This, this is the one. So I'm going to pull on this without trying to have a hernia, Laurie. So we're gonna oh, go ahead. Oh, give me some pressure against that, come on. Yeah, all right, so we're gonna reset. And you're gonna see this rod is a little bit quicker. You can see where, where it shuts off, right? And I'm gonna pull on it, I'm gonna do this. And you can see the rod, it, it shuts off, but it still has some play to it. Oh. Ah, that's all I'm gonna pull on that. Go ahead and tell me what it was. I'm going to say it's in the 40s. Oh, you hit 40. Oh, 40. So that's 40. So that's a heavy rod. Do we have a question? Chad Lucart. Yes. On an anodized ferrule or yes. even an aluminum real seat, yes. how are you roughing the interior to get a good glue bomb when set? Repeat the question. Okay, so he's asking me <laughs> when I want to glue, per se, one of these into this, it doesn't fit, but <laughs> why? What do I want to do? What? It will later. It'll fit it will, later. It will fit later. So in particular, our ferrules do have cuts in them already. You know, on the real seats, I want to say there's a little bit of swirl, but the best way to do it, take a rat tail file and just rough it up on the inside. Make that what noise What was too. the noise? Right? <laughs> so you take a rat tail file, something harsh, and just scrape the inside. Wipe it out and go to town. I'm a big fan of scraping things up. I know there's two different schools, schools of thought. Some people don't like to do it. Some people do. I do. I've never had any failure with my glue. So, But for inside a ferrule like this, a number four ferrule, it does have a spiral cut in it. Still can scrape it up if you want. But yeah, the question was, what do you do? That's what you do. Thank you, Chad. Chad Lucart, thank you for watching. Yep. Chad's always watching. He's I a good know. Man. Okay. Chad's nice. Any other questions about the, what I've talked about so far?
Good. Next thing we're gonna go, we're gonna take the rain shadow stand up. And like I said, these, these rides are a little quicker than the, than the previous series. A little heavier wall thickness. Bingo. Um, and this is the lightest one. This is a medium, medium heavy. heavy. And I can fit this one in a number six ferrule without having to trim it if I was gonna make a trolling rod. But it doesn't fit in the four. It would fit after a couple inches, but we're gonna get to that. So I'm gonna put this on there just so you can see a lot lighter in the hand. Even though when you're talking about glass and you're talking about these types of rods, they're not the lightest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're going to be the heaviest series, series we have. Yeah. Go ahead and reset that. And you're going to see the action on this. You're going to pull thing. 40 again? Nope. I'm going to pull 40. I'm going to stick them out to 20s. Don't need to kill myself. <laughs> and you can see it's a little bit quicker action. This is more um, West Coast. We call them West Coast, East Coast, even though we sell all over the world. This one, this particular one's selling from Italy to... Germany to Hawaii, but anyways, it's got it's got good action. It pulls nice, real simple. And you see it kind of bottoming out. This is the medium heavy. Bottom out didn't really bottom out, but at 28 pounds. Yeah. So you can see that. Pretty okay. Yeah. Like I said, very versatile blanks. You can do almost anything with it. This particular series is a little more expensive because of the wall thickness and um, sheer material in here. Mm -hmm. These run anywhere between the $100 to $110 range for a blank like that. Sell a lot more FSUs at half the price. Mike cord again. What? You Mike? Oh. He's pulling cords all over the place. It must be when I'm... Yeah, It must be when I'm pulling. It's, it's knocking out the cord. At least it's pulling the Thanks. cord and not a muscle. Yeah. Oh. All right. <laughs> Thanks for uh, letting me know that, by the way, guys. So that's, that's the other glass series we have. Um, FSU probably more, more popular than the RSU, probably just because of the sheer dollar amount, but um, they both have their place. Beautiful. Awesome blanks. All right. You want to give something away, Ian? Yeah, let's give something away. Go ahead, do, so, do it then. I think we should give away a bag. A bag? I don't think we've shown these on the show yet. We have these Team Rain Shadow bags. Dad yeah. uses them all the time. Yep. You've gone through a bunch of them. He loves to take them fishing and beat them up. Yep. Um, but they're just nice little sport tech bags. Yep. You wear them like a little backpack. Yeah, it's a little phenomenal bag. A phenomenal. You know, it's a little <laughs> over the shoulder, going, going fishing, going hiking, throw some waters in the back. My wife likes to collect rocks, so they, we get a lot of rocks in them. You know, she paints rocks. So you, know, you know that they can carry weight. They can carry weight. There we it's go. a little secret, though. I want to give a secret. Oh, give a secret. The secret to this bag is what I like to do. I had Holly do a couple of them for me. Is an extra stitch around this part. Yeah. Yeah. You get it an holds extra it stitch on. in there, and it holds it on because what happens after after time, it pulls on this material here yeah. and it separates. Oh. And I end up just throwing them away. Yeah. But if you do an extra stitch. It lasts a little bit longer. Well, you know my, what might help is not like putting 30 pounds of rocks in the bag. You tell your mom that. <laughs> so okay. let's, let's go ahead and give away a bag. I need a name. Daniel Sisk. Daniel Sisk. You just want a bag. Yep. Send me a message on Bats and Enterprises Facebook page. You're on it right now. Just click our name and click message. Tell me your name if that's not your real name. <laughs> <laughs> and send me your address and I will ship this out to you and maybe I'll throw a couple of stickers in there. What? Throw maybe a new I sticker will. in there. I like those new stickers. I do. They've been very popular. I do too. They, they're very popular. Yeah, they are. Um, I know. Anyways. They're Thank fun. you. Buildthefish.com. The bag is on there and so are the stickers. Take a look. Perfect. Yep. Daniel, give uh, Eden a shout and she'll send it off to you. Yep. All right. So we're talking about glass. All right. We're going to talk about another series called the SWBs. Salt water blank, SWB. This blank's been around to as long as I've been around plus. Oh, so like when the dinosaurs were on there? Oh, not that old. Come on. Um, we've had this series in our lineup going 22 years. Wow. Um, this blank goes anywhere between $50 to $60 blank. Um, it has one, two, three. No, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different powers goes from a light to a medium light to a medium to a medium heavy to a heavy to an extra heavy. So a lot you can do with these blanks. Like I said, they go from 50 to 60 dollars. 
retail. Um, if you have a wholesale account, obviously they're not going to cost you that much. But this is probably one of the most popular series we have for a durable, all-around rod from catching anything you can think of. Bottom fishing to all the way to doing a lot of different things. People cut and paste this blank all the time. And I'm going to cut and paste one in a little bit also to show you how to cut a blank and what it does to a blank from the butt or the tip. I've said it many times, I'm not a big fan of cutting from the tip, but when you're talking about glass blanks, because of their forgiveness and their more moderate actions, cutting from the tip doesn't mean as much as you would be cutting from a tip off of a glass of a graphite rod. Mm. We'll get to all that. So we're going to show you a light, a medium, and an extra heavy. I'm ready. In that series. So this is the SWB series. Whoop. Here we go. I'm learning too, you guys. All it's right. Fun. So this is the SWB series. They're all in gloss black. Great all around blank. So let's take the light, for instance. Mm -hmm. This is nice and light blank. And all of these specifications and weights for all of these blanks are in the Batson catalog. Mm -hmm. You want to tell them how to get a Batson catalog if you don't already have one? You don't have a Batson catalog and you want one, you go to BatsonEnterprises.com. There's a little button that says catalog. You click on it, you fill out a form with your name, your email, and your address, and we ship you one for free. It's the finest catalog in the industry. It's got how many pages? Over 300 pages. Over 300 pages. We also have a supplemental catalog that goes with it with yep. our new products. Yep. Um, and we'll ship that out to you just so that you can have it. Yep. And it has a lot of specifications. It has a lot of applications. It has everything from the butt to the tip to the powers, the line and lure and all the stuff you would expect from Batson product line in that catalog. Yes. Obviously you can get it online. A lot of more people are uh, tech savvy. They can just go online and look at it. Me, yeah. I like I like a catalog. I like to flip through a catalog. Yeah. And it makes a good coffee table book because it's pretty. It is pretty. It has a nice cover to it. So anyways, smaller diameters, smaller tooling, smaller wall thicknesses. This is a seven foot. It's, a, it's an eight to 15. All of these rods, as I have said many times, most of the Batson rods are underrated. So if this 8 to 15, I'll take the high end of it, 15, 20, whatever, you know. But you'll be able to see um, the glass and how it bends and what it means. So this is a great uh, pier rod. It could be a lot, so many different things. You can use it for fluke and flounder and smaller game fish, rock fish, things like that. And this is our lightest one, 8 to 15. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on the machine. Um, breakage. You get your giggles. <laughs> There's no breakage on these things. Watch. Watch why. Oh. Go ahead. I don't like it when you say just watch. Just watch. We're going to watch. We're not going to okay. break anything. Though. I'm going to watch you can see, back here. You can see it. it it's, it's not horribly um, slow. I mean, it's got a nice tip to it. But as you pick into it and really want to pull into something like this, I mean, it's got good backbone. You know, it does shut off, you know, but it does, does have good enough power, you know, and I can only pull so hard on a blank like this. This one, eight pounds of pressure, right? So eight to 15. Um, and that's eight pounds. Eight pounds of pressure is a lot. And I could get away with a lot more because of the bending. <laughs> As Eden backs up, <laughs> you can see, you know, but at some point it stops bending, right? It doesn't bend from here because of the, the thickness of the blank. Um, the wall thickness, not necessarily wall thickness, but diameter thickness stops it from bending. Yeah, but you can see what it does, right? So this is our lightest series, seven footer. And these run, like I said, you can get this blank all day long from a distributor for 50 bucks. And that's my MSRP. Um, if you have a wholesale license or a business license, a lot of our distributors offer wholesale pricing on a blank like this. So Less than 50 bucks. Most of you never pay for a blank like this is 50 bucks. Solid blank, all around great seven foot blank. All right, we're gonna go to the medium in this series. And as you can tell, the walls get bigger. You can sell diameters. So as you move up in powers, the diameters get bigger, the walls get bigger. Um, same glass, same e-glass, same um, designs. This is a medium, seven foot medium. And this one is rated 15 to 25. You can do almost anything on this. Half ounce, two ounce power for throwing. Um, go ahead and put it on a machine. Hopefully people are still watching. <laughs> I know sometimes it gets a little redundant. Let's cut stuff up. Let's cut stuff up here pretty soon. Okay, you can see 
The actions are the same. Powers. Put my glasses on. Yeah. You know, oh, I don't you know. know why I'm standing right and here. I'm pulling on kind of kind of the same amount I was pulling on the last one, but you can see what the blank is doing on this one. All right. So the last one was at seven. This one is at fifteen. Last one was eight. Fifteen. And this is medium. In the medium. You done breaking stuff? I'm gonna go one more power up. You can see, like I said, the diameters get bigger, walls get bigger, powers get bigger. Go ahead. I'm gonna pull on this one, and these are all seven footers. And this, and this would be our heaviest one. In a seven footer, I'd do anything with this plank. Rock fish, bottom fish, link cut, everything. Nice. And you can see, let me put my glasses on. Did I pull my plug again yet? That's usually what happens. And I'm gonna pull on it, and this is a seven foot heavy. Oh, I'm pulling pretty good on that one. And that one is at 22 pounds of pressure. Very affordable e-glass planks. SWB. Saltwater blank rain shadow. Woo! SWB. Yep. Great series. So that's that. All affordable blanks, durable blanks. I throw these on the ground. Don't worry about them. Nice all around good blanks. Saltwater series. Beautiful. Or freshwater. You know, guys use them for catfish. They guys can use them for can, a lot of different things. <laughs> Snagging spoonbills or you know, whatever the case is. Yeah. Glass blanks. Glass blanks. All right, so we're going to show a little bit now. you got to keep those on if you're going to be cutting stuff up, dude. I'm going to be cutting stuff up. I'm going to be showing different powers, what it does to certain blanks. I love it. So when I cut blanks, depending on the blank it is, sometimes I use a Dremel. Oh, well, I don't know how much I trust you with that one. And it has a cutting blade on it, right? So this is my just normal little Dremel, Dremel 3000, little plug for Dremel. <laughs> but different speeds. I usually go high speed, just like that. Woo. You like the noise? Happy Halloween. Yeah, so we're gonna be cutting Eden's fingers off later today. <laughs> And showing you what that looks like. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take an 8-foot SWB. Same series that I just talked about. Ooh. We have them in 8-foot, 7 and 8-foot. So I'm going to pull this out of a bag. This is rated 15 to 25, 8-foot. So I got an 8-foot blank. Um, I don't want it to be 8-foot. And I want a little more power. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the tip. As you cut back off the tip, you're gonna see the power get stronger. Yeah. Tips get bigger, you know. So what I mean by stronger, so right now, this is a 12 to 15, right? As I cut back, you'll see it's gonna turn to a 20, 40. And the farther I cut back, the heavier that action is gonna be, right? I, like I said, we have so many blanks that a lot of, times you can find exactly what you want, but sometimes you don't have exactly what you want. You want to do a little trim trim. Right? A little trim trim. <laughs> a little trim trim, right? Just a little trim. Right, so my overall length, I want it to be, let's just take some, pull something out of the, uh-huh, and say, I want this blank to be seven foot, and I want it to be a 2040, right? Um, but I got an eight foot, yeah. and this rated, you know, 12 and 25. Yeah. So. Let's do some stuff. Let's do some stuff. Okay, let's do some stuff. Back up. You time. using the drill master? What are you doing with that nope. thing over there? Well, I was going to cut a bigger blank later, and I'm going to show you about our, our drill master, which actually is a like a chop saw on. But, so. Safety googles. Yep, safety googles. So right now, this is a, this is probably a, you tagging? I'm looking real quick. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Oh, it's okay. They're watching me. Uh, what are you doing? I'm just being silly. Okay. Should we give something away? Yeah. Okay, let's give away a hat. Give away a hat, Eden. James. Who's going to get this lovely hat? We're going to give him a What? Kim Lucart? Yes. Kim! Kim. I, that must be Chad's wife. That is. Nice. That is Chad's wife. Nice. Good. Hey, Kim. You want a hat. 
Send me a message. You know the deal. You guys watch this a lot. <laughs> Send me a message on Bats and Enterprises Facebook page. I'll ship you out your hat. Might include a sticker. We'll see. Nice. Thank you. Thank Sorry you. about that. I got a little distracted. Okay, this <laughs> particular rod is an eight foot medium. And like I said, what it was rated, 15 to 25. And it has this 9.5 tip. I always remember sometimes tips vary half, half a size. This one is actually a 9.5 tip. I want to make it a 12 tip because a 12 tip is going to be about a 40 pound rod. And don't ask me how I know that. Just, I know that <laughs> you just cut back until I get to this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take my micrometers. Now, everybody doesn't have a set of micrometers. I am going to, so I'm going to turn my micrometers on. I'm going to zero out my micrometers and I'm going to take the inside of the tube of this right there is and you're gonna make the inside of this is about 19.19 hold on I'm gonna finish them up tighten up my micrometer so I can see it I am going to take my micrometers now that I know the inside of this 12 tip or you can just start cutting back until you feel the power. This is just how I do it. And I'm going to go slide down my blank until I stop on my micrometers. All right, bingo. It's going gonna, it's gonna to stop right about... Sorry. I'm going to slide this down to right about there. I'm going to hold right there. And I'm going to ask Eden to give me a piece of tape. I would have a piece of tape hanging here. If I was more prepared, but <laughs> I'm not always as prepared because I do a million things all at the same time. So I'm going to put a piece of tape here like this. Right about where I wanted that to be, I am going to take my Oh, little, safety goggles. I got my safety goggles, right? And I'm going to take my handy dandy little saw here. Is this safe? This is what safe? What you're doing right at this very moment? Yeah, and I'm going to cut. Right at the edge of the tape. And I'm going to make my cut. And it's pretty straight. I put the tape there so it doesn't splinter. Right? And then I will take off my tape. And I will show you that it should be close to a 12.0 top. And it's better to undercut than overcut. So hopefully I did that so I don't make myself look like a fool. If not, it's going to have a 12.5 top. Look like a fool? Look like a fool. So we're going to take this tape off. Can you? I've got no fingernails, which makes it really hard. <laughs> All right, so I wanted it to be a 12 point top. And yep, I cut it too much, so it's going to have to be a 12.5. <laughs> you did so great. I was doing so well. You were doing so well. I was doing so well. And we're going to check to make sure. So I got the new top. So I just added that much more power, right? Remember earlier I was talking about how to add power. I'm going to cut back, especially on a glass rod. You can do this. I would not recommend this on a graphite rod. So I just added a bunch more power to this rod. So now it's a 2040, right? And you can do that. So, Why would you not do it on a graphite rod? Because graphite's too stiff, and a lot of the action in graphite rods is in the tip. Uh huh. And if you start cutting away the action of the rod, it's not the same rod. It's not the same rod, right? Yeah. Okay. And now I said I wanted this rod to be seven foot. So I'm now cut what from I'm the gonna, back end? I'm going to cut off the back end. Oh. So we're going to go ahead and get that tape measure again, and we're going to measure from the tip down. Go ahead and give me a. From the tip top? Yep. From the end of the tip top down. And my seven foot mark is right here, right at the bottom of my decal. I, I can let go. So what I would do is I'd take a piece of tape, maybe a little bit bigger. I don't think this will go around. A little bit longer. I can do that. So I'm going to wrap around here and then I'm going to cut off the back end. So now I have a seven foot 2040. Not that much, but that's okay. Yeah, that's enough. That's plenty. So my measurement was here to seven foot. 
I am going to wrap my tape. And how I cut straight is I, is I wrap the tape and I wrap it over itself to make a straight edge. So I can have a straight edge, right? And, I, and a lot of times I will dog ear these so it's easier for me to get off because I have no fingernails. So I'll dog ear it, right? So it'll be straight. You can see the tape is straight. And then I will come and put my safety glass. Always put your safety goggles on. <laughs> safety goggles. Safety goggles on, right? And sometimes when, when I start getting into these bigger blanks, I'll show you. I can still do it with the smaller diameter stuff with the Dremel. But when I get to the bigger stuff, I'll show you why I use that other one. So we're going to come here. We're going to get this going. And this is just how I do it. I mean, if you have a better way to do it, that's fine. And a lot of times. That's why I like the chop saw too. Is it's easier. I'll show you why I do the chop saw. Not everybody has a chop saw like this, but a lot of people have a Dremel. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Don't worry about that. You're gonna put a butt cap on there. So now I have my seven foot 2040 rod. So just to let you know, glass is forgiving and you can do stuff like that. Should we tape it up and pull it? To see, but I didn't pull it before. So. Wow. But, you, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You cut off the tip, you're adding, adding more power because mm -hmm. that bends more and this is not gonna bend as much as it was before. You see how that is mm -hmm. doing? And then I wanted it at seven foot and it's at seven foot. So Todd Dabrowski asks, yes. does that affect the breaking point? Todd Dabrowski, does that affect the breaking point? Um, it will affect the, the action a little. Of course it'll affect the action, but on, on a glass ride like this, it's not going to affect the breaking point. I can't tell you the truth. I don't think I could break this rod. Um, and most people, even if you have your drag locked down, aren't going to be able to hold this rod. And if it broke, <laughs> it's going to break where it shuts off, which is back here a little ways, right? So all I'm doing is changing the fulcrum point uh, closer up from the butt. But you see where it's going to shut off, right? And mm -hmm. if it's going to break, it's going to break here. This, is not, this glass is not going to break, right? It's going to break where it shuts off. So yes, it does change the breaking point to farther up the rod or down the rod. Um, yes, it would. Good luck on breaking it though. Um, Good luck on Todd, breaking you know, it. You're, you're not an 800 plus pound surgeon with a medium lights SWB, so. Should we give away a shirt? Yeah, let's give away a shirt. James? Um, hey, you stole my little wand. Ulysses Rivera. Ulysses Rivera. Ulysses Rivera, show him what he won. Kawana. It's a shirt. Superman blue, red, it's white, Superman, and blue. red white, and blue. Yeah. It's got the bats in on the back. Best fishing rods start here. I like that saying. It's good. That's our tagline. I know it is. It's true. The best fishing rods start here. Yes, they do. Yep. No matter whose fishing rod it is, it usually starts here because everybody buys something from us. That's very true. Yeah. So, this is the shirt you want. Send me in your size. Send me in your address, and I will ship it out to you. Ulysses Rivera. Excellent. Bippity boppity boo. Thanks. I don't know if everybody heard Todd's question. By cutting back the blank, does it change the breaking point of that blank? Yes, it would. If it was going to break, it's going to move it, move it closer toward the tip or farther from the butt. So yes, it would because I cut this much off. So yeah, so the breaking point is going to be that much closer towards the tip. And when he says breaking point, it's usually where it shuts off, where the blank shuts off. Glass? has more parabolic bands, so the shut off is not as quick. Mm -hmm. So that's why we can get away with cutting off a little bit off the tip. Yeah. So, good. Beautiful. Right. One more thing I want to show. We got time for one more thing? Any one questions more thing? out there? No questions out there. Good. All right, we're going to take this heavy duty tuna blank. Woo! Yeah, this is a um, giant bluefin tuna blank, right? The, and 
we're going to make this so it fits into a ferrule of a number six. Darn it, this one already fits into a six. We're going to make it fit into a number four. <laughs> <laughs> this one was probably designed to fit a number six. So this is a giant bluefin tuna. But the guy says, hey, Bill, I want to put a number four on there. So I said, okay, no problem. You would take the inner diameter of a number four ferrule. You could find that information in our catalog, or you can do the fancy dancy way I did it earlier. And you can get your micrometer. You can micrometer the inside. What I like to do is I lock this thing up, okay? And I'll run it down this blank till I can fit it. My micrometer on the inside was about, let's make sure we make it fit. All right, give me a piece of tape, you know? And we're gonna put this here, and we're gonna cut this much of that blank off to fit a number wow. four. Yep. People are doing this all the time. So I, I'm look at what, how much I'm cutting off this back end of this That's blank. That's a lot to cut off. Substantial, 18 inches. This blank was actually designed to fit a number six, but the guy says, hey, Bill, I wanna put them into a number four. So I'm gonna double check my ferrule. I'm gonna double check my my cut spot. Okay, now I'm gonna move up and get away from the Dremel because the Dremel, well, you saw, it gets a little tricky um, and doing it on a table like this is, is a little tough. I would, I would rather prefer to be on a table where I'm doing it off the end of the table yeah. or something. Um, so everybody wants to figure out how to do it themselves. We're gonna go ahead and use this little chop saw. And this particular chop saw has a particular blade on it. What is the blade on this, James? It's a, it's a diamond, diamond blade or some kind of chop blade. It is. Is that the one you cut the tip of your thumb off on? No, different one. It's diamond. diamond. It's a diamond, 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 diamond blade. So I'm going to take this blank. And I'm going to run it, and I'm going to cut it to fit my number four ferrule. Oh, where are your goggles? Yeah, where are my Googles? Those are your glasses, not your Googles. Oh, thank you. And I'm going to check to see where it falls. I'm going to fall right against that tape, just on the inside of that tape. This particular one has a little clamp that helps me to make sure nothing moves, All right? And I kind of like the clamp, All right? So it holds it. Um, I'm just doing this for television purposes. I would not use this clamp normally, but we're gonna use the clamp. And we're gonna see, you're gonna see the cut. Nice, clean cut. Sorry about the noise, everybody, and the dust. Probably should wear a mask, <laughs> you know? Hindsight is twenty twenty. But at the same time, that's the last thing that's going to kill me is that dust. I'm sure I've done worse things. And <laughs> number four ferrule. But um, perfect pit, perfect fit. So now I just built that rod. So now I can fit a number four ferrule. Like I said, it was built for number six. I decided I wanted a number four. Number four ferrule. I'm going to fish an eighty white on it instead of a one thirty. Um, the four ferrule fits, and I would just glue that up and fit. Beautiful. Yep. But like I said, just took 18 inches off of it. Yeah. So anyways, Substantial. hopefully somebody got something out of that show. <laughs> the moral of the story, glass blanks are awesome. Very durable, yeah. price point sensitive, amazing blanks. You have a question? Does cutting void the warranty? Does cutting, cutting does not void my warranty on glass blanks. Try not to do it as much as possible on the graphite stuff. Um, like I said, I've, like I've said many times, we will sell 100,000 blanks this year and have less than 200 warranties. That's a 0.02% warranty. So I'm not real worried about my warranties. Um, no, and it you does can, not. And you, and you can take that to the bank. Tell them Bill Batson said. All right. Um, yeah. Ulysses needs to know how to claim his shirt. Oh. Oh, you need to know how to claim your shirt? Yeah. Tell them how Send to claim Send me a shirt. message at Batson Enterprises on Facebook. You're on it right now. You just click our name, send me a message, say, hey, I'm Ulysses. I wear a size blank, blank, blank shirt. 
and um, your address, and then I'll send it to you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed our show. Yeah. I like glass planks. Very durable. Like I said, I'll say it again. We sell a lot of glass planks. They're used from everything from um, catfishing to bottom fishing to you name it, marlin, swordfish. If you have any particular application that you would like and want a recommendation, I'd be more than happy to send you a recommendation and, and possibly a print for it. Yeah. You know, because we have all of our blanks have prints. Yeah. And is my mic still on? Yeah, let's hope. Good. Um, and if you do have any questions, send an email to Batson at BatsonEnterprises.com. We will have someone connected with you and answer your question, and yep. we're there for you. Yep. We, we answer at least 100 questions a day, if not more, from people all over the world. This is what we do. This is our passion. This is our livelihood. Cool. This is who we are. This is our lifestyle. This is everything to us. Yeah. And we appreciate everybody who supports us and believes in the product, the Batson product line and trusts the Batson product line and chooses the Batson product line mm -hmm. for their recreational outdoor experience. Yeah. I have another pro tip. Okay, go ahead. These make wonderful back scratchers. <laughs> That's an expensive back scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are awesome tool to have. It's called a micrometer. It, if you have any questions about them, inner diameter, outer diameters, uh, inches, and millimeters. Beautiful. Yeah. So anyways, I think we we're, done? we're done for the day. Aloha. Thank you very much. And fish on. Fish on. You can catch this episode on YouTube next week. Nice. Yep. Thanks. Yep.